Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, back here on Wager Talk TV with your NCAA Fade the Public video, the most public plays for NCAA tournament for both Thursday and Friday. I had so much information. I was going to do the entire first round, but just Friday alone, I've got six different games I want to talk about for you free here on this video. And I'm also throwing in an additional bonus, the late Thursday night play-in game, the first four as well. So whether you're joining us Thursday or Friday here for the NCAA tournament, Tons of great information coming up free for you in just a moment. As you know, my Fade the NFL public video, which I started in late November during the regular season, went an incredible 31-7 and against the spread right here on Wager Talk TV. Free for you each week from late November through the Super Bowl, fading the most public NFL sides each week on this video, went 31-7. and I came back after the football season, gave you a free college basketball video each weekend here in which I looked at the top 25 matchups for Saturday and Sundays and gave you my power ratings. Using my power rating value against the closing line hit over 60% over the past couple months. So now we're going to kind of mix the best of both. We've got the NCAA tournament here. Not going to look at the power ratings, but I am going to take the fade the public angle from the NFL video and kind of mesh it in here to college basketball now. So let's see how this works out. We're going to look at, once again, a large card, all the Friday games for you here in the first round. Also a bonus Thursday night game here in just a moment. Once again, this is all the Friday games, and I'll be back perhaps maybe Friday night with an additional video for you for the Saturday games as well. So check back each and every day, as you should all the time here on Wager Talk TV for great free information. Let's first get to the games. In just a moment, I want to let you know about a promo code I've got for you. My entire NCAA bracket, my pick for all 63 tournament games through the NCAA championship is available right now on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Normally, my bracket alone is $39. I've discounted it on the site to $25. But as you know, I love to discount it even more for my loyal viewers of these videos each and every week, and I'm doing it for you. $9. That's right. My entire NCAA bracket is just $9 with promo code BRACKET9. BRACKET9 nine is the promo code you must have to get that special price. This is my complete NCAA tournament bracket, my prediction, my straight-up winner for every tournament game, all 63 games through the championship, includes nine first-round underdog upsets. That's right. Nine first round upsets. So for $9, you're getting each upset for a dollar and also includes two bonus long shot national title picks, both of which are over 50 to one, two bonus national champion shots, both over 50 to one, and also some additional first round upsets for those of you that are filling out multiple brackets. This is the best offer I've given you all season. My complete NCAA tournament bracket for just $9 includes every pick for all 63 games, including nine first-round upsets and those bonuses, as I just mentioned. Once again, Bracket 9. Bracket 9 is the promo code you must have to get my complete tournament bracket right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Let's get to the uh, games for Thursday and Friday. Once again, check back later this week. I will have a bonus video for you for the Saturday games. Just so much information here. I didn't want to put too much into one video. Uh, before we get to the Friday games, I do want to quickly touch on the first four playing games on Thursday night. There was one game that jumped out as a pretty public play to me. In fact, perhaps one of the most public plays in all of the first round, and that's Michigan State against UCLA. Uh, this is a great matchup. It's the late game at 957 Eastern on a TNT, or actually, I'm sorry, TBS, TBS on Thursday night, the late game at 957 Eastern. UCLA opened as a one-point favorite Sunday night, and this line quickly went the other way. And Michigan State became a two-point favorite. In fact, a lot of books opened Michigan State favorite. Within about 30 minutes on Sunday night, uh, this line went from UCLA favorite to Michigan State favorite. And it's not a surprise. Spartans were one of the biggest money burners all season in college basketball in December and January. A lot of turnover problems, but they started to fix those problems in February. And they are playing much better. So I fully understand the love for Michigan State. Also, the Spartans come out of the best conference in college basketball this year. The Big Ten, by far, the most dominant and a deep conference. Pac-12, meanwhile, is one of the weaker conferences. Definitely a down year for the Pac-12. Uh, so not a surprise to see the public get behind Michigan State. It's hard for me to disagree, but the line value is really not there anymore. Uh, my power ratings actually make Michigan State only a one-point favorite in this game. And one other thing I'll point out real quick, I love watching all the shows on Sunday night when the brackets come out on ESPN, CBS, all the other networks. And a lot of the analysts, a lot of the so-called experts, not only like Michigan State to win this game, but they liked them to go several games into the tournament. Not only to win the play-in, but to win a couple more rounds. Uh, so be careful. I, I don't disagree. I do think Michigan State's playing well here. It makes a lot of sense. But once again, Michigan State Spartans, for what it's worth, looks to be a very public play on Thursday night. 
Let's get to the Friday games here. We're going to go down in regional order. Both the South and Midwest regions each have eight games on Friday afternoon and night. Um, some of them don't have much of a public lean. I'm going to skip those games. But I want to highlight six games on Friday quickly that do have some public love. And uh, we're going to start here in the Midwest region, and we're going to look at Purdue. This is in schedule order, by the way. I'll give you the start times, but it's in rotation order, just to make it simple here. And um, as of doing this video midweek here, um, Purdue looks very public against North Texas. Uh, Purdue's currently minus seven and a half. That's where the line opened. There has not been much movement. So the public is on Purdue, but it does look like some sharp X's, and this line is held steady. That game, by the way, goes at 725 Eastern on TNT Thursday night. Texas plays uh, fast. Uh, they're, they're a team that can move the ball. And this is a situation, uh, I'm sorry, Purdue, meanwhile, is a team, you know, that likes to play Big Ten style basketball, very physical. And they're taking on a North Texas team that many people are not familiar with. North Texas had a nice run in their conference tournament last week to get the automatic bid. And uh, this is a North Texas team that plays extremely slow, one of the slowest tempos in the country. Purdue's not necessarily a fast team, but they've played some fast teams in the Big Ten this year. They've also played a few slowdown teams, but really nothing like what North Texas is capable of doing. And they qualify as a good half-court slowdown defensive dog here. Um, so once again, Purdue looks very public. Beware, though. Uh, North Texas could be a dangerous underdog in this game. Another one in the South region on Friday that's worth taking a look at, and this is an underdog. As, we, as I mentioned in the NFL video, the public is usually on favorites. And whenever they're on an underdog, um, it's always a red flag. We'll see a little bit more underdog love in the postseason because these are all quality teams. But perhaps the most public underdog of any game on Friday is Oregon State. Oregon State just upset Colorado as a nine-point dog last Saturday night to win the Pac-12, get the automatic bid. Them along with Georgetown were two teams that would not have been in the tournament had they not won outright as eight-and-a-half and, and nine-point dogs last Saturday night. And that bumped both Louisville and Colorado State out of the tournament. They're on the outside looking in. Oregon State, though, a very public team now. As I mentioned, North Texas, Oregon State also plays extremely slow half-court basketball. Um, but I just don't think it's going to matter in this game. Uh, Oregon State is a team uh, that was not very good this season, a uh, very mediocre team at best. And they're taking on what I consider one of the danger most dangerous teams in the tournament, and that's Tennessee, who plays even better half-court defense. Um, Tennessee was very up and down this season, but I had a good feel for them. Uh, part of my 59-34, and 87% return on investment season at wagertalk.com in college basketball, a large part of that had to do with Tennessee Volunteers. In fact, I used them 11 times this year, and I was 8-3 and three against the spread in those 11 games with the Volunteers. So I was able to pick my spots, and I like the fact that the public wants something to do with them here. And that's probably because, as I mentioned, they've been a real zigzag team in the past few months, kind of alternating wins and covers against the spread. Oregon State was good for people in the Pac-12 tournament last week. But a long-term angle that's worked very well for decades now is to play a team coming off a loss against a team coming off a win and had to get the automatic bid to get in. And that's the case with Oregon State. They would not be here otherwise. So I think it's a pretty good setup here for Tennessee. Uh, volunteers look to be a little underrated heading into this NCAA tournament. Once again, Oregon State, a very public underdog on Friday. That game goes at 4.30 Eastern on TNT. We'll stay in the South region here for another public game, which goes at 9.57 Eastern on TNT, a late night game on Friday, and that's Winthrop against Villanova. Villanova shorthanded without a key player, key guard, and nobody really wants anything to do with them. I fully understand that, and I don't really disagree. Um, this line opened seven. It's now come down to six and a half. Um, the other one of those Sunday night uh, analysts, uh, all the analysts on Sunday night loved Winthrop as their big upset. You know, every year we have a 12-5. And this is the one a lot of people are picking again this year. Um, uh, be careful, though. You know, it does look very public now. But I'll be honest, I don't disagree. I think Winthrop probably is worth a look here. Uh, hey, I've said this in the NFL video before. The public is not always wrong. You know, you use this as a filter. Use this to kind of maybe get you on or off of games. We see 12s beat 5s every year. This one makes a lot of sense. Uh, Villanova is not as good as their overall seasonal stats without their full lineup now. Concern I do have, though, with Winthrop is Villanova plays very slow, 320th adjusted tempo. Winthrop, meanwhile, likes to get up and down. Very efficient team, and they played a fairly fast pace. Um, but they're able to do that against a much weaker schedule season. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Winthrop is able to do that against a much better defensive team and, a, and just a better team overall in Villanova. Winthrop, by the way, plays the 11th fastest tempo in the nation this year. Um, and so that is a concern. But once again, it makes sense. But Winthrop does look like a very public underdog once again on Friday. 
Don't forget also on Friday, there's one more a Midwest regional game I want to get to. But first, I want to remind you, my NCAA tournament bracket is available right now on my page, stevemerrillwagertalk.com. Normally, it's $39. I've discounted it on the webpage to $25, but I want to discount it even further for all the viewers of this video, $9. It includes nine first-round upset picks alone. So for $9, you're getting each of those for a dollar. You're getting all 63 picks for the entire tournament in that bracket. My straight-up winner prediction for all 63 games includes nine first-round upsets and also two bonus long-shot national title picks, both of which are over 50 to 1, and also additional first-round upsets in case you're doing a secondary bracket, as I know many of you do. Once again, my complete NCAA tournament, not 39, not 25, just $9, but you have to have this special promo code on this video only, bracket 9. B-R-A-C-K-E-T, bracket and the number nine, bracket nine. And go to my page right now at wagertalk.com for that fantastic offer, my complete NCAA tournament bracket, all 63 games and predictions for just $9. Let's stay in the South region here before we get to the Midwest with one more game for Friday. And that game goes also Friday night on TBS at 920 Eastern. Rutgers looks very public on Friday evening. This game opened Pickham against Clemson. It is now one and a half. It quickly went from pick them to one and a half early in the week. I actually did another video earlier in this week with Tony Mejia and Drew Martin here on Wager Talk TV in which we broke this game down in detail. So I encourage you to check the Wager Talk uh, TV archive here on YouTube. Find that video. It's a good five to six minute breakdown, more detailed, this Clemson Rutgers game. But I don't agree with this move. I think this game is a toss up. I actually make the game a pick them with my power ratings. Um, so I disagree with the line now going to one and a half on Rutgers. And another guy have is they're a terrible free throw shooting team, one of the worst in the nation, hitting only 63.5% from the charity stripe. So what should be a tight, close game down the stretch, that's definitely a concern. Should be a low-scoring game, by the way. Total around 126, two slowdown teams. Temps, Clemson plays at about the seventh slowest pace of any team in the entire tournament. And once again, I did a full video on this game this week for Wager Talk TV. Uh, be sure to check out the Clemson Rutgers preview. But once again, I disagree with this move. Rutgers now a one and a half point favorite. I made the game pick them. Rutgers Scarlet Knights. By the way, this is Rutgers' first tournament bid in 30 years. They've been in four different conferences since they last made the tournament in 1991. Uh, Rutgers, though, looks surprisingly to be a very public on Friday night. That's the South region for you. We do have two more games on Friday that look public. They both come in the Midwest region. Just a quick reminder, I'm planning on coming back uh, later this week on Friday night, Saturday morning, with a video here for you, all the Saturday games. I'll let you know if I see any public plays in that game. But we got a lot of information here for Friday that I wanted to squeeze into this video. And once again, two games in the Midwest region look pretty public. Uh, first one goes early at 1245 Eastern on Friday on um, True TV, and that's Colgate. Open plus 10, now down to 8.5. Uh, so Colgate does look fairly public on Friday. Not a surprise, though. Um, I mean, you know, this is actually a situation where I made the line only seven and a half against Arkansas. I actually like this team. You know, I mentioned Tennessee earlier. I think Arkansas also could be a sleeper out of the SEC. Um, but I do agree with the initial line move. Is the line open 10? Um, I made the power rating just seven and a half on this game, and it's now about, sitting at about eight and a half. So there's still actually a little bit of line value with Colgate, uh, but buyer beware because they do look public. Not very public. Not quite as much as some of the other games. But once again, when the public is on an underdog, that's a little bit of an additional red flag for me because public normally likes to play favorites, especially when they're on an, a no-name underdog like Colgate against a big-name team like Arkansas. Colgate's a flashy 14 seed. They play at one of the fastest tempos in the country. A very good offensive team. Um, Arkansas, though, is solid on both ends of the court. Uh, obviously battle-tested against a much tougher schedule and a very good defensive team. But they also like to play fast. Um, so Colgate, Arkansas, this should be a high scoring up tempo game, but I just think Arkansas probably does it better. Um, but once again, the line is a little uh, hefty, especially when it opened at plus 10. It's now down to eight and a half. I make it just seven and a half. But Colgate uh, does look like another public underdog on Friday in the Midwest region. And then finally, one other game I want to point out to you here in the Midwest goes on a Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern on CBS. Another public underdog, Oral Roberts, and it's another flashy, fast-paced team from a mid-major conference. So I guess the theme with Colgate and Oral Roberts and why the public likes them. Um, and they're taking on an Ohio State team that I thought a few about a month ago was maybe a number one seed. Uh, they fell to a two seed. They had those three straight losses a few weeks ago, but they once again had to play an extremely tough schedule in the Big Ten. Um, I think they're battle-tested, and they're coming off a loss in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, once again, this fits that angle of a team coming off a loss against a must-win team that won their conference automatic bid. 
Uh, so there's some technical backing here for Ohio State. Um, overall, I think the line is uh, a little short as well. I make it 18 and a half. Um, it opened 16 and a half. It's now down to 16 in a lot of spots. So the public is backing uh, Oral Roberts here, brought him down from 16 and a half to 16, but I actually make the line 18 and a half with Ohio State. And it looks like a decent setup here. Oral Roberts likes to play fast. Ohio State more comfortable slowing things down. Um, and that could be a problem. But Ohio State, a very efficient offense. So I think Oral Roberts is going to be up against it here. And the line does look a little short, actually, uh, and even though the public is back in the underdog in Oral Roberts. So once again, those are the most public plays for Friday. A lot of information there. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check back later this week here on Wager Talk TV. I hope to have some information for the Saturday games as well. Don't forget, though, in the meantime, please go to wagertalk.com and take advantage of this fantastic offer. My complete NCAA tournament bracket, my straight-up predictions for all 63 games, including the championship winner, for just $9. That includes nine first-round upset picks, two additional long shots to win the national title. Both are over 50-1. to one and also some additional first-round upsets in case you're doing multiple additional brackets. Once again, $30, I've taken it down to $25 on the site. I'm taking it down even further for this video only with promo code BRACKET9, B-R-A-C-K-E-T-9, the number nine. BRACKET9, my entire NCAA tournament bracket for just $9 right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Best of luck. Enjoy the tournament, and I'll be back later this week with more great information right here on Wager Talk TV.